Welcome everybody to Inside the Cardinal Playbook, the coach's show for William Jewell College Athletics. I'm Rick Cole. We start off today with Mike Stockton, head baseball coach at Jewell. Uh, I guess there's no other way to say this except the weekend series against Quincy was a very tough one. Dropping three out of four, uh, their bats were on fire. How do you explain that? Because your pitching and defense has been so good all year. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think their coach could explain it either. After... Uh the first double header, he came up to me the next day and he said, oh, I don't know what's happened, but our guys have caught fire. And they certainly did. Um, you know, I just give them a lot of credit. And um, we, we didn't play that well, but, but they, they came out hitting the baseball. And so, you know, even though it wasn't a great weekend for us, we did find a way to salvage that last game. And every single win is crucial for us right now. And, you know, if we lose that last game, then we're out of the playoff hunt. But wow. because we found a way to win it, we're still in it. Well, let's talk about that because you came, I, I'm not sure how far you were down, but I know you came back in the final half inning to win it when you had, uh, gosh, Mike, uh, that's almost something that's hard to explain in itself because you had been beaten pretty bad all weekend. Where did you find the, the strength to come back in that last half inning? Well, really, we before we can even talk about the last half inning, we got to give a lot of cre credit to David Collins, my pitcher. Uh, it, the fourth game was quickly headed in the same direction that the first three games were in. They came out, um, we threw up a zero in the first inning, but in the second inning they scored two, in the third inning they scored three, and before we could blink our eye it was five to zero, and it was, it was headed south pretty quickly. And uh, David Collins just put his foot down and he said, well, I'm not going to give up any more runs, and he threw up zeros the rest of the ball game. And he threw, uh, I think, about 135 pitches and, and finished that ball game. I mean, we had guys warming up in the bullpen. And, and David, I mean, the, the credit needs to go to David because he, he said enough's enough and I'm going to throw up some zeros for our team. And thank goodness he did. And then okay. we just started chipping away. And I believe we scored one in the sixth, one in the seventh, and then in the bottom of the ninth. I, don't, I can't explain it, but we caught fire. And Sam Mormon started off with a double, and then they just couldn't get us out. And the next thing you know, we're winning the ball game. I'd like to take us back to your midweek game last week, a midweek doubleheader against Southwest Baptist, when you swept the Bearcats behind some good young pitching. Yeah, we had uh, a true freshman and then a redshirt sophomore that threw for us. Tim Miller was the redshirt sophomore. And, I mean, he threw a, a nice ball game for us. I think he threw six innings and um, gave up two earned runs. And gosh, he hasn't had, had an opportunity to pitch a whole lot. In the same way with Brendan Beatty, he threw a shutout. He's a true freshman. Yeah. And, you know, I think what happens is that our pitching staff is so good and it's so deep that these guys don't get much of an opportunity to play because that's how good our pitching has been. Usually, when we hand one of our uh, top six guys the ball, they just throw the entire game right. so it, it doesn't leave a whole lot of room for these other guys to get much playing time and for them to have stepped up the way they did with only throwing a handful of innings up to that point I mean, it was pretty impressive. Yeah, again, you're talking about a sophomore and a true freshman. Uh, tell us a little bit about those guys a little bit more deeply. First of all, Tim Miller. What, what has he brought to the team this year? Well, Tim's somebody that uh, has really changed who he is as a, as a person and a player. Tim was very quiet, very reserved, shy, um, and I mean now he's he's a kid that's really bought in. He works extremely hard. He's in our 800 pound club in the weight room and so now three years later, two and a half years later, you're starting to see the reward or Tim's starting to see that reward. Uh, happening for him. So I'm really excited about that for him. How about Brendan Beatty, the freshman? Yeah, Brendan is somebody that we thought was absolutely going to get quite a bit of playing time early in the season and maybe even be the closer for us. But Blaze Carano, who's a senior, was also fighting for that closer role and, and Blaze got the first opportunity and he just he did so good we've never really taken him out of it. So right. that limited Brendan, but um, he's pitched a little bit here and there, but for him to come out and throw a shutout, you know, was pretty big. 
That's head coach Mike Stockton of Cardinal Baseball. And again, the Cardinals are on the road at Truman State this weekend fighting to get into the GLBC playoffs. We are back in a moment with more Inside the Cardinal Playbook. My name is Jesse Limekuller, CEO of Belvoir Winery, 110 years in the making. We provide a, a unique experience uh, in that it's a historic building. It's 110 years old. And we allow uh, people to bring in their own caterers to um, have a nice formal sit-down meal or something that's social and very casual. Um, we let them do basically whatever they want as far as their, their event goes. We have the fountain running and have the gazebo up for all the wedding days and special days out here. I'm Jesse Limekiller, the CEO of Belvoir Winery. Poor Boy Oil Company is and always has been locally owned and operated. We promise convenience and service with small town values. We want you to choose Poor Boy again and again, whether you're looking for a hot cup of coffee to help start your day, grabbing lunch at midday, picking up milk at the end of the day, or heading for a Cardinal game any day. We're here to help you get you on your way quickly. Most doors are open 24 hours, so we're here when you need us. Poor Boy Oil Company. Find us around the Northland, wherever the Cardinals fly. Head track and field coach Tom Eisenhower joins us inside the Cardinal Playbook. Welcome, Coach. It's Hi, Rick. A busy spring for you now that the weather is good, and you were at Baker this weekend. How did things go there? Things went well. Uh, you know, Baker, an old Heart of America athletic conference rival, um, right down the road. Easy trip for us. Uh, we consider that a tune-up meet. We didn't take our full squad, but um, for those that were just trying to get a couple last reps in before the conference championships coming up, uh, that was the purpose of that meet. Uh, we did get some good marks, a couple of school records, and um, it was a great day. Uh, an unfair question, I'm going to admit this, but we talk about it all the time. The difference between NAIA Division II, do you see it as much in track and field as maybe in other sports, or uh, how does it stack up? You know, the biggest difference, in my opinion, and in, in having coached in both associations, is that at the top of the NAIA is very comparable to the top of, the, of Division II. Uh, I'd say the biggest difference is the depth. Um, the amount of talent that comes down the line in Division Two is a lot greater. So, you know, if you were to take uh, the top times in, say, the 100 meters, they're going to be very comparable between Division Two and NAI. Sure. However, you know, maybe your average time of all the people that run the race over the year, the average for the Division Two is going to be faster. Well, so. It kind of sounds like what we hear in other sports. Depth is the key thing. Yes. Yeah. All right, let's talk about uh, the Wildcat uh, invite and then uh, talk a little bit about the uh, GLVC coming up for you. But uh, who did well at Baker this weekend? Uh, well, Satoa Talamatasi, uh, sophomore for us. She has just been assaulting the record board. Um, she broke Brittany Riley's school record wow. the previous weekend in the shot put, and then she broke that mark again. And wow. so uh, for her young lady, she's now over 43 feet in the shot put. So a tremendous throw for her. Um, Alec Whiteside had a personal best. He actually holds our, our uh, freshman record in the hammer throw, and um, he had a great meet out there as well. Um, some personal bests. Zinka Durek, who also plays basketball here, she had a personal best in the 800 meters. And um, in, the, uh, in the discus throw, uh, was another area where our kids stepped up and did well. Wonderful, wonderful. All right, GLVCs uh, loom on the horizon. You're going yes, there. Sir. By the time this airs, uh, it'll be next weekend. But sure. uh, tell us, uh, give us a little preview with your young teams going to the conference meet. You know, it's it'll be very similar as it was with the indoor championships, where you know we lack the depth that we need to compete for the top spots for the team scores. However, we do have a lot of young kids, um, and even even our, our returning seniors. That will do. This should do well. Um, Blake Alexander is ranked first in the 110 meter hurdles. He's a provisional qualifier in that event. Um, Margaret Perko is ranked fourth in the 100 meter hurdles, and she is uh, 0 .01 seconds away from the provisional mark. So wow. I expect her to do very well. She's also ranked top ten in the long jump. Uh, freshman Gretchen Mays is got my cheat sheet here. Good, good. Uh, she's ranked seventh in the 100 meters, and uh, she's also ranked eighth in the long jump. Um, White side, who I mentioned, is seventh in the hammer. Uh, there's only one freshman who's got a mark better than he does in the conference meet. Uh, Trevor Nix is eighth in the shot put. Um, I believe he is the highest ranked freshman in that event. And um, Satoa is fifth in the shot, fifth in the hammer, and seventh in the discus. Wow. Uh, she will also compete in the javelin for us. So she's a uh, very talented thrower. So. Hey, uh, we uh, haven't had a chance, really, and I, I think you do this at the Daryl Gorley Invitational. You honor mm -hmm. your seniors. Could you talk a little bit about your uh, seniors, the, the kids that are departing the program after this year? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, 
when you work with student athletes for four years, it doesn't matter how long you've done it, and, I, and I'm a young coach, so I was, haven't done it that long, right. but uh, when you're about to see your seniors leave, it's, it's bittersweet. Um, you're excited for them, excited for the prospects that they have before them, knowing that they have received a great education, they're prepared to go into the workforce, but um, you know, you as a coach, you develop close relationships with them, and, and to see them leave, um, you know, pulls on your heartstrings a little sure, bit. So, you bet. so I'll be sad to see them leave. Um, Coach Nancy Guillaume, Co. Yeah. As everybody knows her, um, she's she's been a joy to coach. Uh, a lot of fun, a lot of attitude, and uh, a lot of passion. Uh, Maggie Swenson is another one who came on as a freshman, who I've got to coach on a daily basis as being one of the sprinters. Um, had a great year as a junior last year. This year, started her senior year very well, but uh, ended up getting a, fresh, a stress fracture before the end of the indoor season. Now, she's battled back, and in fact, we've modified her training quite a bit, so she only runs one or two days a week, and everything else we're doing either in the pool or on the elliptical. Um, but she came back this weekend at the Baker meet and uh, ran 58.9 in the 400 meters. So now she's ranked 10th in that right. event, and so we expect to see her do well and end her career on a high note, especially after being in the boot for so long with the yeah. stress fracture. Um, Mackenzie Reagan, uh, she was part of our um, our crew of distance runners four years ago that uh, helped us clean up in the Heart of America Conference before we left that conference. Um, I'm excited to see her go on and, and do big things. She actually had surgery on her foot last summer, so she's another one who has battled back from injury. Um, Jesse Johnson has just been a loyal, loyal distance runner for us from Smithville. Um, she's done everything we've asked her to do. and. Uh, she was actually one of the girls that got to compete in the NAI Marathon, but then also went on to compete in the Boston Marathon. Yep, so right. yeah. it's fun to have that. Um, Trevor Logan, great, great guy. Uh, he's a thrower for us, throws the javelin, and um, he will be dearly missed. His, his dedication to the throws and, and to the team has been, has been wonderful, and um, we'll be sad to see him go. Emmanuel Porter, we call him EP, mm -hmm. another great distance runner. He's been dedicated to the cross-country program. Um, dedicated distance runner, but he's also just been kind of the guy who's is there every single day, puts in all the work, um, does everything you ask him to do, and does it to the best of his ability. And so, you know, that kind of attitude is going to help him be successful in the rest of his life. Uh, and then Chris Speed, uh, great track name, Speed. <laughs> exactly. You know, he uh, he came in as a jumper and a sprinter, and once Logan Petz graduated, he saw that there was a a need that can be filled in the decathlon and so starting his junior year, he stepped up and said hey coach I want to do the decathlon so learned how to hurdle learned how to pole vault learned how to throw um, and has done very well for us has finished fifth in the heptathlon indoors and the uh, fifth in the decathlon outdoors last year and, um, he's been working with local pole vault guru Todd Cooper up in Excelsior Springs in the vault and then we've been in his you know he's a 13 foot vaulter now and he's a He's a tremendous hurdler, and so add that to his sprints and his jumps, and I expect him to do really well this weekend at the conference championships. So, wow. great group of seniors. We graduate seven, um, so we'll be sad to see him go, but excited for what lies before him, too. We'll be back with more Inside the Cardinal Playbook following this. Tanner's is new to Liberty, just south of the Highway 152 and I-35 intersection. They're open Sunday through Tuesday from 11 a.m. until midnight and Wednesday through Saturday from 11 until 1.30 a.m. Come in any day for food specials in the spacious dining area. Happy hour specials are served from two spots in the building and the service is fast and friendly. Tanner's of Liberty, just south of the Highway 152 and I-35 intersection. Inside the Cardinal Playbook, Dustin Combs from Jewel Softball is with us today. Coach, congratulations. You're in the GLBC playoffs, and I guess the last couple of weeks, you thought you were headed in that direction, but it sure helped to sweep this weekend. Yeah, yeah. having the, having the home series, um, winning uh, both against uh, S&T and Drury was a great way to go out. Um, we didn't want to. We didn't want to go into the weekend thinking we were already in, and I we may have already been in, but we we certainly 
um, didn't want the girls to have that mentality and, and even us coaches wanted to go in with the same focus that we needed to have to beat and kind of prepare ourselves for this upcoming weekend and, and you know if you're not competing every weekend you might you might uh, take a step backwards and we didn't want to do that. Your weekends have been fabulous. So you've, you've had three and one weekends and now four and oh weekend and, and that's kind of propelled you into the playoffs. Yeah you know you, early on we had a couple three and one weekends and, and they were on the road um, and when you can do that, you know, you, you, you're going to gain, gain ground. And um, we kind of put ourselves in that third spot on our side earlier in the, in the uh, month and then was able to maintain it. Had a little slip up midweek against Rockhurst, but then bounced back really nicely for this weekend. To uh, get some good pitching this weekend, it's been Rachel Hayden and Faith Song uh, throughout uh, most weekend doubleheaders. But a senior got a start in the last game against S&T. Corinne Fry came yeah. in and pitched pretty well. She pitched really well. And, um, you know, we saw what uh, Crim was capable of doing last year, and that's uh, get hitters to swing out pitches out of the zone, and uh, she makes speeds really well. And, um, you know, we really need Corinne to, to give us that, um, that option for this postseason. If we're going to make a run at, at any level, we need to have all three of them going, and Kaylee can still come in and, and get innings as well. Um, but, you know, we've, we've had to put so much on the backs of Faith and Rachel that um, – it was a, it was a good to see Corinne come out and throw us some confidence again. Yeah, and you talk about putting pressure on the or putting the weight on the backs of those two. They have handled it fairly well. It's it, we seem like we talk about it all the time, yeah. but they're carrying the the burden all the time in the circle. Well, and they just love to compete, and I think that for Rachel, you know, being a senior, her senior year, and having been an integral part of our pitching staff for all four years. Um, you know, last year and this year, we've kind of it's been on her back, and and Faith has been a great uh, one-two punch with her. And um, you know, Rachel had a great season last year, and and um, and won a lot of games for us. But I don't think she dominated last year like she has this year. Right. We just gave her a lot more run support last year. This year, she's won some very close games, kept the you know kept the scoring down for the for the opponent, and you know our ERA reflects that. You have a chance now this year to go into the GLVCs at full strength, where last year you're banged up going into the GLVCs. The loss of Ashley Barrett in center field was a big uh, part of that, and a couple of other people got hurt during the tournament. Mm -hmm. How does that feel, and, and what do you feel about the GLVCs coming up? Well, you know, um, you certainly want to be healthy at this time of year, and, and um, Maybe the one that, that we actually aren't going to have will be Eileen Greenwood. Um, we're just not real sure where she's going to be. Can you tell that story again real yeah, quick? Yeah, she, um, you know, she's battled uh, shoulder and, and uh, arm problems her entire career. She's had a labrum surgery that um, possibly didn't heal correctly. Um, now she has some rotator cuff uh, problems. And uh, Wednesday in practice, dove for a ball, it popped and really has lost almost all range of motion in her in her arm. Um, so softball right now is, you know, we don't know that she'll play softball, but she's got to think more about long term, of, you know, just living a, a normal lifestyle and um, she'd be a nurse. And so she's going to need to uh, to rehab that arm for whatever she, uh, whether she plays softball again or not. Um, but Megan Barnes has stepped up in the situation and played really well over the weekend. Um, she gives us a lot of uh, speed if we utilize her offensively. Um, so going into the tournament with possibly not Eileen is, is you know, she's she's been a, uh, a inked in spot there at shortstop for us for four years and, and um, just a great leader uh, on the field. Uh, doesn't say much, but leads by example. Um, but it is nice to have, you know, uh, for the most part, offensively, our, our um, team in good shape. Um, we will uh, utilize, you know, the the lineup that we have for the most part, one through six, one through seven, uh, has been very consistent. Um, we, we're going to keep working on uh, riding Aaron as much as we can behind the plate. Right. You know, she's she's been a workhorse behind the plate, and really don't see any changes uh, in that in that lineup as far as behind the plate. Uh, potential to play a lot of games in, in a short amount of time this weekend. We've we've tried to manage her and maintain her through this point and could say that we have done a good job, could say that we haven't done as good a job as we wanted to, but um, this weekend she's going to have to give us everything she has for four or five, possibly six games. 
One player I want to talk about a little bit because she gives you a viable option off the bench, and uh, Megan Kapler came in and had a couple of hits uh, or maybe even a few more this weekend mm -hmm. as a pinch hitter, and uh, she's been someone that's been coming on, I think. She's a spark plug for us. She's always in the game. She knows the situation uh, that she gets put in is, is a difficult one, and um, she doesn't. she's gotten to a point now where she's okay with that pressure. Uh, that's a difficult position to play. So she's, But what she does so well is she watches every pitch of the game and she prepares herself that way and um, has been a spark plug both both at bats and pinch hit, pinch hit situations this weekend uh, got hits and then in her start had a had a nice uh, game for us as a DP and um, you know she again she can when she's on base she creates a little havoc for defense she's got great speed and um, seems like like I said every time we've needed her to come in and get a big hit she's done that Finally, uh, the last regional rankings I saw, you were not in them. You were not included in the Midwest regional rankings. Does that mean you have to win the GLBC tournament to go to the NCAA? You know, I think it probably means that we have to at least be playing for a championship in the, in the tournament I, and, and possibly win it. You know, it, if you're not in the, the regional rankings to this point, it's, it's very difficult to get in them. And, um, uh, unlike last year where we felt like we had the body of work that should have had us in the regional rankings, uh, this year we haven't we haven't done what we needed to do outside of the conference play and um, although our, our conference schedule and, and um, conference record speaks for itself outside of conference maybe we could have done a little better um, so based on our experience last year going into this tournament I certainly feel we have to win it to, to give ourselves a chance to continue on that's head softball coach Dustin Combs. The Cardinals will face Bellarmine at 10 a.m. on Friday to start the GLBC tournament. Congratulations Thank and you. best of luck. Thank you. We're back with more Inside the Cardinal Playbook after this. Hi, I'm Rachel Callagy, Head Connections Specialist with Welcome Opportunities, the Northland's only target marketing firm that specializes in turning the thousands of new residents who move to our area each year into your customers. We are the advertising option that's never turned off, torn up, or tossed out. At least not yet, anyway. So if you're looking for the most cost-effective way to reach prospective customers before your competitors, give me a call today at 816-883-8633 or visit my website at welcomeopportunities.com. Back inside the Cardinal Playbook with Alexis Bechtold from the Tucker Leadership Lab joining us now. And welcome so much. Thank you for coming in. Thank you for having me. Well, yeah, it's going to be fun because this is something we don't talk about an awful lot, yet a yeah. big part of our program here at William Jewell is the Tucker Leadership Lab. Give me a definition, if you would, first of all. What is the Leadership Lab? We are an experiential education tool that does, uh, we're a challenge course, really. That's really the Everybody sees simple. the ropes out there, yeah. right? But it's more yeah. than that. Yeah, we do experiential education out on those ropes and out on those big logs mm -hmm. that are strangely in the middle of our campus. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Everybody wants to go and jump on them. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. But they're actually there for a tool to build teams and leadership development. So we do leadership development and we like to work with the teams here on campus. Right. We've it's had. amazing. It, it, the teams use it, but mm -hmm. you also look for outside organizations to come in. Can you yep. describe a little bit, first of all, about if you're an organization and you're there, what your experience will be? Sure. Uh, it, we work with fifth grade through adults, so it could be a school group, it could be a scout group, it could be um, a work group at your church, or it could be a work group at your employment. So um, if you come out, uh, we ask you questions about what you're going to, why you're coming. Why do you want to build a better team? What does it mean for you? And then we help you guys get to the, that next level of being able to work better as a team. And we may be focusing on communication. We may be focusing on leadership skills. Um, we may be focusing on just how to be a better teammate. And that applies not just out on the field, but it also applies in the workplace, it applies in the schoolroom, so it's really a, a really cool tool. The ropes course is, I think, the most visible sign of the Tucker Leadership Lab. Yeah. But I know, and you mentioned it before, you bring them in for some uh, co consultation? Uh, maybe do you a do more bit. than just go out on the course? We can do that. What, um, what's that like? 
Most of the time, it's mostly just with the contact person that I have a conversation with them, either on the phone or Skype, or you know, we can meet face to face and get a little tour of the course. Uh, but most of the time, it's asking them where is their team right now, right? And what do they want to see in their team? How do we want to help them get to that next level? What is that ne next level for them? Sure. Because every team is different. And so we're here to customize that experience to help them make their team better. I want to talk to you a little bit about how some of our teams, our athletic teams, have used the facility. But first of all, if you're an organization or anything, mm -hmm. how do you get reservations to go through the training? All they have to do is go to our website, tuckerleadership.org, and they can fill out a book your event form, and it comes straight to our office, and we'll follow up with a call or an email and take all those steps to get them on the calendar. Is it a day-long training? It's either a half day or a day long. Some groups choose to do even more and make it into a two-day training. And other groups, especially school groups, they like to uh, kind of step up the process throughout a student's progression in their sure. school. So in seventh grade, they might do the low course. And then eighth grade, they might do the Odyssey course in ninth grade they might do the tower so there's a progression that they already have planned and integrated into their curriculum so that's a possibility as well now tell us a little bit about maybe what some of our athletic teams have, have done for you well we love working with the football players and uh, we get to work with the football players in particular at the very beginning of summer camp so they come, they move in their stuff here on campus, and then we get to play with them. <laughs> so we start the entire experience of their football career here at Jewel right. on the Tucker Leadership Lab. And um, we have a great mix of seniors and freshmen all in the same group, and we get to talk about leadership within the team and how to be a good teammate and communicate pretty cool yeah and then obviously uh, football is a very team sport right. but then there's also swimming and Mark Gold does a great job of making sure that everybody understands that yes it's an individual swimming event but each individual's scores are tallied into the team score and so we have to think as a team, even though we're not swimming side by side or we're comp competing side by side, we're still working as a team. Right. And so we utilize the challenge course to reinforce and highlight those ideas so that they can take it straight back into the swim meets and be able to support each other sure. even better. Alexis, finally, tell me a little bit about what your role is within the program sure. and uh, all of that. I understand you've got some new people coming in as well. Yeah, yeah. I'm currently the director, and then Dusty Gleason is going to be the interim director after me. And we also have facilitators who are kind of our frontline people. Right. And they are the ones that get to work with the groups and get to know each of our awesome participants. And they get to be the ones who make those changes and help those uh, participants have those aha moments, sure. which is really an awesome experience as a facilitator even. You're fired up about this. You, you love doing it. Clearly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, thank you for coming in and spending some thank time you. and visiting about it. The Tucker Leadership Lab at William Jewell College. Alexis Bechtold has been our guest here inside the Cardinal Playbook. And we're back with the closing comments after this.
And that's inside the Cardinal playbook for this week. Thanks for joining us. We'll be covering the Cardinal softball team at the GLBC playoffs this weekend with audio coverage free online at jewelcardinals.com. We'll see you next week inside the Cardinal playbook.